Hello, and welcome to episode 50 of Sarastro's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint Sabine Wren from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Imperial Assault. Sabine's look varies quite a bit, which means we have several options to choose from when painting her, and I've chosen to capture how she appears in the original series, with one or two changes as dictated by the actual sculpt. Let's take a look at the painting stages. As usual, I've chosen to prime the figure in black, followed with some zenithal highlights applied from above, but a plain prime in black, white or grey would also be fine. We'll then apply the base colours, and I'll be introducing some initial light and shade for the pink armour. I've then chosen to add some simple dark lining to the figure to add some definition rather than shading entire areas. I'm then going to work section by section, adding highlights, texture and decorative details as necessary. I will also be having a play with an optional non-metallic metal effect for the armour and finishing the miniature off with plenty of paint splats and a scenic base. Let's begin with the base colours. I'm going to begin by painting the skin, and whilst you could of course use whatever skin colours you're used to, I've chosen to provide a base colour of English uniform, to help achieve a more olive skin tone. I'm using a size 2 series 8 brush by Rosemary & Co. Next I'm going to use German Grey to paint the dark grey sections of the outfit. This will include most of the top except for the light grey section we can see marked on the sculpt. I'm also using this for the gloves, the boots, the belt canister, and the straps for the elbow, knee and shin pads. I'm also using this for the dark grey sections of the blasters. For the lighter grey band on the top, I'm simply mixing in some white to produce a grey tone which is something like Mechanicus Standard Grey. For the trousers, I'm desaturating the English uniform with some German grey and a little white. and I'm now adding some additional white for the lighter sections. I later realised that this also carries on round the back. 
I'm now mixing some Mornfang Brown into the darker tan colour and using this to paint the belt and holster. Moving on to the hair, I'm going to begin by using some pure white to provide an undercoat to the frontal sections, which I'll be painting orange in a moment. This is important because orange is naturally quite a translucent colour, so needs some light underneath to allow it to really shine. I'm now going to paint the dark section of the hair by mixing some Nagaroth Knight with some flat blue, and I'll be mixing in some black for the darker ends. Here I'm applying the purpley blue to the top of the head. and I'm now blocking in the darker colour for the lower part. We can go over this with some of the lighter blue to articulate the texture. I'm now mixing in some white and using this to place some initial highlights and create a loose transition into the pure white at the front. I'm also using the dark purple to introduce some shadow beneath the fringe. We can now paint the fringe orange and I'm using Fire Dragon Bright mixed with a little Uriel Yellow. You can see that I'm pulling the pigments down towards the hair tips. Here I'm mixing in a little white and adding a few frontal highlights. We'll be returning to add some additional highlights to the hair later on. Next I'm going to paint the armour using Screamer Pink mixed with a little Mephiston Red. I've also chosen to block in the areas of shadow by mixing in some Nagaroth Knight. We don't need to bring this right to the edges of the armour, as we'll be adding some chips here later on. Here on the chest, we may as well sketch out where the two diagonal white stripes on the side are going to be. For the lower half of the chest plate, I'm going to use the darker tone to block in an area of shadow.
The right knee pad will also have a vertical white stripe. Here on the shin guards, I'm also introducing some of the darker tone to lay down some initial areas of shadow. I'm now going to use some pale grey tones to sketch in a gradient on the right shoulder pad, where we'll be overlaying a checkered pattern later on. This doesn't need to be especially smooth. I'm also using some pale grey to provide an undercoat for the wrist unit, as well as to paint the belt buckle. I'm now using an off-white to paint the stripes on the right knee pad and the chest. We can use the pink armour tone to make corrections as needed. I'm now going to use the orange we mixed earlier to paint the left shoulder pad. Here I'm introducing a little of the pink karma tone to the edges and loosely blending the tones. I want this to have quite a rough and battered look, so we can be quite sketchy in how we do this. Here I'm adding a little of the lighter tone to the top of the shoulder pad. I'm now using the orange to paint the wrist unit, once again not worrying about being too neat as we'll be adding some chips and paint splats here later on. Next I'm filling in some of the panels on the blasters using Prussian blue. And we can pick out some of the raised detailing with a pale grey. With the base colours complete, we're ready to add some shade. I'm now going to mix some Agrax Earthshade with Nuln Oil, and use this to add some dark lining around the brown belt, holster and trousers. This takes a bit longer than shading the entire area, but will minimise the amount of highlighting we'll need to do later on, and I think hints at a slightly more cartoony aesthetic. I've also chosen to thin the mix down with some Lamion Medium to create some more gentle shadows, mostly at the rear. I'm 
I'm now thinning some black, or black mixed with a little purple, and using this to introduce some dark lining around the rest of the miniature, and draw in a few thin lines of shadow on places like the lower back and the lower section of the hair. We're now ready to add some highlights and finishing touches. I'm now going to paint the eyes and I've chosen to use a white ink by Dela and Rowney. I'm first mixing in a little blue and some grey to create an off-white before drawing in the eyes. You don't have to use an ink here of course, but the concentration and thin consistency can be quite helpful. Once I'm happy with the size, I'm now mixing some black with the English uniform and using this to dot in the pupils. I may do some retouching here later on, but now I'm going to highlight the skin by mixing increasing quantities of Kizla flesh along with some Uriel yellow into the English uniform base tone. As usual, I'm working over quite large areas to begin with and gently increasing the brightness whilst gradually reducing the size of my highlights. I'm taking my time and building up the highlights in fairly gradual increments, as this is the one area of the model that I'd like to have quite a smooth texture. I'm now brightening things further with the addition of some white, and I've chosen to create some tonal variation by using a mix that contains less of the yellow, producing a slightly more pinkish tone.
If you find yourself jumping a little too abruptly to a lighter tone, we can go back with a more intermediate colour to help smooth the transition. And I'm going brighter still. As usual, it's the upper cheekbones I like to emphasise with the brightest highlights, as this helps draw attention to the eyes. I'm still not completely happy with the left eye, so I'm making some small adjustments to the pupil. For the lips, I'm mixing some Screamer Pink with the English uniform. And I'm now adding a little white. I'm now adding some additional white and a little yellow, and using this to highlight the lower lip, which would usually catch the light more so than the upper. I'm now using black mixed with some English uniform to draw in the eyebrows. And I'm now trimming this back with the skin tone. To finish the skin off, I've chosen to mix in a touch of Nurgling Green. The green will be barely perceptible, but should add a subtle boost to the luminosity. With the skin complete, I'm now going to draw in the rebel symbol on the chest plate. To help with the control of the paint, I'm going to mix in a little flow enhancer, which reduces the surface tension, allowing us to create thinner, more precise layers. This is a tip I picked up recently from the wonderful Vince Venturella. I'm trying out a size 2-0 brush by Redgrass Games to do this, and, just as with the hair, I'll first be drawing the symbol in white, before laying the orange on top. As usual when painting freehand designs like this, I like to start off small, then expand the shape gradually. I find the advantage of using a fine detail brush, such as this, isn't so much to do with the fineness of the point, but more to do with the shorter hairs giving us that extra bit of control, meaning we can more or less draw with the brush like a pencil. I'm now drawing a couple of concentric circles surrounding the main symbol. Things don't have to be perfect, as we'll be weathering the area later on with some chips and scratches, but we can use some of the armour base tone to correct things if we like. I'm now mixing some Troll Slayer Orange with a little Yoriel Yellow, and painting over the design. The result is a lot brighter than if we had tried painting the orange directly onto the dark pink armour. I'm now going to mix some white and some Uriel Yellow into the armour base tone, and use this to provide some initial highlights for the upper part of the chest plate.
We can also stipple some of this onto the white stripes to create the impression of the paint having chipped off. It's a small touch, but I'm also using some fluorescent magenta to pick out the small central panel. Next I'm mixing a little blue and grey into some white, and using this to add a few chips and scratches. I'm now moving on to the rest of the armour, adding highlights by once again mixing white and yellow into the Screamer Pink and Mephiston Red base tone. I'm now adding additional white and yellow in a few stages. As I want the armour to have a metallic look, I'm going to be pushing the contrast quite far. You can see I'm being a little more rough and sketchy as I apply these highlights compared to when I was working on the skin. This is because I want a more textured look for the armour. Here on the right shin guard, I've chosen to add a secondary vertical highlight next to the primary central highlight. If you feel that the saturation needs a boost at any point, we can always brush on some thinned magenta fluo. I'm now pushing the highlights further still. To widen the contrast further, I'm now placing a few dark reflections using Nagaroth Knight mixed with black.
and here I'm picking out a few more edges with the highlight tone. I'm now once again going to introduce a few touches of green to some of the highlights. This is to create one more form of contrast against the magenta tone of the armour. The green could either be mixed into the highlight tone, or simply glazed on top as I'm doing here. And I'm now adding some chips and damage just as we did with the chest. Moving on to the rest of the outfit, I'm now also using some pale greys to paint the belt buckle, as well as the panel casing on the wrist unit. I'm now providing a pale undercoat for the two small screens on the wrist. And to colour the screens, I'm mixing some green fluo, blue green, and some white. And I'm now roughly adding some pale grey highlights or chips to the casing. We can now add a few simple highlights to the rest of the clothing. And I'm picking out a few metal studs on the leather belt. For the leather itself, I'm adding some white and some yellow to the base tone, and adding quite a scratchy texture. The gloves are soon going to be splattered with paint, so I won't be spending long on the highlights here. I'm now going to paint the checkered pattern on the right shoulder pad. I'm using German grey for this, which I've once again thinned with a little flow enhancer, and I'm returning to the 2-0 fine detail brush. One way to do this is to draw a series of parallel lines in the vertical and horizontal axes. We can then colour in alternate boxes. I'm now going to draw the wolf's head design onto the other shoulder pad, using Screamer Pink mixed with black. We can of course use the orange to obscure any areas we're not happy with. Once done, I've chosen to glaze on some thinned yellow, just to fade the design a little.
and I'm now adding some chips, mostly to the edges of the shoulder pad. Finally, I've mixed quite a thin pinkish orange and I'm using this to lightly shade the inside of the design. Next I'm going to return to the hair and add some further highlights by mixing some white into the flat blue and Nagaroth Knight base tone. and I'm also adding just a hint of the fluorescent green to the final highlights. Some of the Black and Nagaroth Knight shadow tone can also be used to help strengthen the definition of the texture. We can now add Sabine's paint splats and I'm starting with a lilac colour, made by mixing some of the Screamer pink into the flat blue and white. These are going mostly on the gloves and lower legs. We can then add some orange splats using your orange of choice, and I'm using orange fluo. This can be applied with little or no thinning at all. Finally, I'm using Nihilac Oxide to add my third colour of paint splat and any verdigris colour would do. I'm now adding a few final edge highlights to the blasters with a pale grey. And I'm rebasing the figure as detailed back in episode 10. I'm now finishing Sabine off with a few final splats of paint. And this completes Sabine Wren. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video and the series so far. Reaching episode 50 is quite a milestone which I couldn't have reached without the kind support and encouragement of my viewers. As always, you can find full details of the brushes and paints used in the video description, along with links to all the places I can be found on social media. My very special thanks as always go to my incredible patrons for so kindly funding this work. To help me continue to produce future content, feel free to hit the Patreon link to find out more. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!